Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jen here um, on a very dark evening. Not that it looks it because I obviously have a light, but it's pitch black. It's probably, yeah, it's probably closer to six o'clock and it's officially November. So I just wanted to sit down and do a different kind of video, I guess, because I haven't posted a sit down video last week. Um, not that that's make or break for anybody, but I was pretty sick last week, if I'm being honest. I have a work routine or a work week in my life video going up and towards the end of that, you can see me getting more and more tired and more and more sulky nearly, um, which is ridiculous considering I'm very used to being in tune with my body. But for some reason this time I didn't pick up on the cues that I was coming down with the flu. Um, so I just didn't stop and figure it out. But I have been sick for what has mostly been a week and I just wanted to talk about the things I do after being sick or after the worst of being sick when you already have a, um, a chronic illness. So yeah, let's get into it. is I have hypermobility um, type of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And I also, because of that, have POTS Syndrome, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia. Essentially, what that means, I guess, in a very abbreviated form, is my joints don't stay in place very well. They tend to move in and out of place. I don't fully dislocate, um, but I do sublux, which is a partial dislocation. On the POTS front, I have a very unstable blood pressure. So anytime I do get sick or I get a virus or there's basically any change to my body, like temperatures or posture, um, my blood pressure drops, plummets completely. Um, so yeah, that's just where I'm coming from. And I guess I wanted to sit down and do this video because nobody, at least nobody I know, but there probably is, um, you know, people talking about when you already have a chronic illness, and that can feel so stripping to your whole life force. It feels stripping, it feels like even moving in any way is very hard and galling, to be honest. Um, and then when you get a basic, <laughs> I mean basic kind of illness, a common illness like a flu or a head cold or um, anything really that's similar, like a stomach bug that we kind of all tend to have at some point, you know, in our lives that is illness upon illness and it kind of compounds like this really unstable layered cake and leads to a bit of a mess that makes your flu symptoms worse, your head cold symptoms worse. Everything is more exaggerated and more painful. I often find when I tell people that I have the flu, they're like, the flu is horrible. I hope you feel better soon. But what I wish I could say, and maybe I should, is I have the flu, but I was in pain to begin with. So I'm already higher on the pain scale than I ever planned to be. And that can be really hard, I think, for people to understand. So today I just wanted to talk through some of the things I've been doing these past few days after I've been feeling a bit better, which is um, probably, the, yeah, probably the last two days I've been feeling okay. I still feel really tired. For me, fatigue is always going to be the thing that lingers. Um, and that's fine. I mean, it's pretty common across the board. Like if you have EDS or POTS or chronic fatigue syndrome or anything, um, you can probably really understand what I'm saying. So I have been doing a few little things just to make sure I get back on my feet because when I was younger and didn't know that I had EDS, um, before I was diagnosed, I knew I was in more pain more frequently than others, but I kind of was constantly written off and told it was growth pains um, and growing pains. That makes no sense, but I was told that. So I used to keep pushing, keep going to school, keep studying, keep pushing and pushing. And my parents used to say I was burning the candle at both ends. And I used to be almost irritated by that because that doesn't help because I have no idea how to control my energy levels because I wasn't informed on what was wrong with me, um, you know, or what was going on in my specific body type because it's not even a case of what's wrong. But yeah, so... I have learned from that. I am now 26 years old, so one would hope I have learned from that, but it has been a steep learning curve. So I guess the first thing I do now when, I didn't do it this time, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that, 
is when I do feel unwell or I suppose it, for me this was a flu so the early stages of the flu you know your joints can feel sore your muscles can feel sore for me because my I already have EDS and suffer chronic pain with that that's very hard to identify it could just be a bad pain day rather than you have a virus or you know something go different going on but usually eventually if my sinuses get blocked and things I notice it I stop I stop what I'm doing I if I go to work I literally sit when I come home I stop my ambition level well my ambition level stays the same my productivity level drops and I hate it I literally hate that I have to stop um but I have learned that pushing through just hurts me more you know it just upsets the situation so much more and then when I am in the throes of the illness and coming out of it something I do is I tend to move very slowly I don't know if this is specific to EDS um, as a chronic illness or there's other there probably is other pain um, disorders that also have this but um, I tend to move very slowly purely because it's almost like my muscles are more tense um, with the virus and pain I already had so they're more likely to sublux and partially dislocate so I tend to walk slower because my hips are more unstable I tend to just do a reaction a bit slower but I do it probably not even slower but more thoughtfully like even just opening a carton of milk or something I mean I'm vegan but anyway um opening a carton of like soy milk or anything I tend to um do even do that slowly in case my fingers because usually my fingers and my hands and toes are very unstable first it's like it goes with the small joints first and then it becomes a larger aspect like maybe my shoulders and hips um at least that's what I've noticed for me if you also have that please let me know because I would be interested in knowing um but yeah so I do tend to move slowly and alongside the same kind of note if my muscles are tense usually when I feel well enough obviously to be up and out of bed I will foam roll out my muscles and I know foam rolling is very associated with um exercise you know like after running after going on a long walk or you know stretching um but I do find it beneficial if I feel like my muscles have been held in a very tense position for a very long time. They tend to really need just a bit of TLC and almost, I don't know if it does a lot. or I don't know if it just feels good to give my muscles, even the muscles in your back. Because obviously if you're coughing or anything, that's very intense and then your shoulder can move out of place. Um, and your ribs can feel really sore. So... That can be really nice just to feel like you're giving attention to that area of your body um, and maybe it's that more than anything but I do recommend it because it does feel nice. Um, oh my god sorry I had a sheet up to, to remind me what I wanted to say um, but yeah anyway something else I do when I'm feeling off even if it's a, not necessarily just if it's a stomach virus but this time as I stop taking supplements that might sound counterproductive because you might be thinking you're supplements and vitamins maybe help your immune system so why would you stop I just stop introducing things that may be harder on my stomach just for a few days not anything critically you know stopping for months on end it's just for long enough because I want to minimize how much I'm giving my body to do it goes in line with stopping completely and like literally stopping um which is obviously a learning process because I don't want to sound like I perfectly know what I'm doing because if I am in bed, I probably am still doing something I shouldn't be doing, like writing or reading or I'm not just sitting. Um, but I do slowly reintroduce vitamins when I'm feeling well. Right now I haven't because I'm just giving myself a few days. But maybe tomorrow I'll have take my B12 again or something like that, you know. So, yeah, that can be pretty um, beneficial, I think. And it's just good to kind of move a little more slowly and... I suppose give your body time if you're moving physically slowly I think your digestion is obviously slower as well and just reduce everything um something else I do which I don't know once again if this is personal to me but I tend to get migraines um sometimes they're premenstrual migraine migraines sometimes they're different sometimes they're because of my neck joints back here um on either side are loose especially this side is really loose um and if I lie in bed a stupid way like it's just not happy with me um but that's fine and it is it is fine really to be fair 
but I do get migraines and something I find that if I get a virus induced migraine, which is like when you have the flu and you know your sinuses are blocked, maybe you're coughing a lot, so your head is tense, so you get a headache that's more intense. Um, I have to really reduce the amount of sugar and processed foods I eat. I have found, this has taken me years to realize that these were making me worse, but um, I eat a plant-based diet anyway. I'm vegan, have been for four and a half years, <laughs> I say with confidence. Um, but yeah, I, I have been, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean I don't love some vegan chocolate or biscuits or um, jellies or anything, Do you know, like the odd time or tatoes. Tatoes in Ireland are what we, we call crisps. Is it Americans that call them chips? I don't even know. I They're called tatoes <laughs> in Ireland. But yeah, I do tend to need to reduce my sugar intake purely because I find that this makes my headaches worse. Um, I have a pretty low, intoler low tolerance to sugar and caffeine and any kind of stimulant anyway. So that might be personal, but I found that it makes my muscles tighter um, in comparison to having maybe a fruit bowl or something like just very whole grain based um, that almost feels like it's freeing my muscles and helping me breathe more. So not saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with if you're feeling really unwell, you know, having something nice because sometimes it's a sad situation and you feel sad about it. Um, in the same vein as this, I suppose something else I try to reduce when I'm feeling unwell, I don't drink coffee. Um, I kind of didn't stick to this this week because I didn't realise I was feeling unwell. I thought I was just having a pain flare. Um, and then obviously I descended into the flu, which clued me in. <laughs> but um, I was working at the time and I didn't take time off work for the first few days. So I did have coffee, but I found that that, because I thought I felt exhausted by pain rather than having a virus. Um, I work from home anyway, so it's not the end of the world, but I do, reduce my sugar the second I realise I am unwell and I do re remove coffee completely simply because I find coffee is very hard on the stomach um, and once again I want to reduce the amount my body has to cope with at any given time. Um, yeah I suppose the last thing I do is because typically I do exercise when I'm feeling well <laughs> you know as well as well can be um, that sounded very self-pitying but you know my definition of well is different to someone who doesn't have a chronic illness and that's fine. But I do tend to exercise prior to lockdown and COVID. I was swimming a lot. Um, so obviously swimming is not weight bearing on your joints. Um, and I do love that. But we do have a treadmill at home, which you might have seen in some of my old videos. So I tend to either walk on that or do a mixture of walking and running, um, depending on how my joints are feeling. And sometimes I do think it has really helped my... I do think it really has helped my legs um, to strengthen the muscles around the joints to kind of hold things together. But I don't exercise when I feel unwell. Besides anything, I don't want to. But I do think it's really important when reintroducing exercise to begin slowly. So I begin by walking. Um, and I, if you saw me walking, it looks a bit weird, but I do tend to do quite an exaggerated walk on the treadmill with um, my arms because I try to free back up my chest when I've been tight for the whole time. Um, usually if I've had a cough, which I don't get coughs often, to be fair, I have quite a strong chest, but if I've had a cough or just phlegm or anything, I do tend to walk, constantly try to move out my arms and that helps. And I do that quite slowly and I build it up by 10 minute intervals over a number of days before I feel more normal. Today I was back up to a half an hour walk. You know, I usually like to do 40, 45 minutes just to free up my mind after work, but obviously I'm not feeling that yet. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my recommendations. That's ex my experiences. It's what's helped me. Once again, yeah, I should say this is what's helped me. So this might not be accurate for you. It might not do anything, but it might make you think about how you're doing things and are there aspects of your diet that need to change per when you feel bad or go into a flare? Are there, you know, different ways you need to self-soothe, to be honest. So I hope you enjoyed and thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, I really love talking about this to be fair, which I'm kind of surprised about, but, um, yeah, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications and all of that and stick around, but I really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much guys. Bye.